So in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between private label, white label, and selling brand name products on Amazon. So a lot of things that people will not tell you about the differences between these two things and the understanding of all the stuff you need to know about building an Amazon business properly are the costs. A lot of people will leave out how much it actually costs to build an Amazon business. A lot of people will leave out all the different resources and things that you actually need to do well long term selling on Amazon. So drop shipping via retail against policy, obviously, but selling brand name products is not as 100% policy compliant. If you're buying them yourself in bulk or even buying one unit at a time, fulfilling it from your own home, your own warehouse, or sending it to Amazon FBA. When it comes to the brand name stuff, those are just the basics of what you need to know. With private label or white label, if you're reselling, uh, buying from China and trying to sell a product on Amazon via private label, you're trying to build the listing from scratch, create the title, create the listing, choose your pricing, so you have to have pricing strategies, all this other stuff. And although private label or white label is a good way to do Amazon, and comparatively, it's a lot faster way to the money. You're going to get there a lot quicker and a lot more simply if you're selling brand name stuff that already exists on Amazon. So the Yasin, the item is already on Amazon. The ASIN exists. It's ranked. It's selling like Hamilton Beach, Cuisinart, Fisher Price, Hasbro, brand name stuff that's already on Amazon, already selling. This stuff's already there selling, so you don't need to spend any money on advertising and marketing. With private label, white label, brands that... If you're trying to create your own brand or if you're just selling unbranded products, just like uh, creating a listing from scratch and you're not creating a brand, you don't have a brand registered, you don't have a company registered, the things you don't know that are most likely, most people are not also not telling you, rather they're trying to sell you a course so they're not telling you the back end stuff that you need to know like how much it actually costs or like if someone's charging you 30 or 40 grand for a done for you private label service, they're not actually telling you the average private label seller is not every single product is not a successful product no matter how good you are at product research keyword research pricing strategies even if you see there's a low competition product that's trending and doing extremely well right now and you think you can get the same product from alibaba and sell it for two dollars less than everybody else is selling it for that is still not a guarantee the product's going to sell the only way you know a private label or white label or unbranded product is going to sell on amazon is by purchasing it and listing it and selling it and then spending money on advertising marketing or amazon ppc there is no other way to tell the product going to sell without at least testing it first unless it's a brand name product because they're already proven they're ranked they're listed they're selling and there's even software like helium 10 keepa jungle scout that will give you the data on how much this product sells on average per month so the costs associated with building a private label business are significant the average private label seller won't tell what they won't tell you most of them anyways a genuine an honest one will someone who's not trying to sell you a fucking course will tell you and like i have courses and training i've been doing it for almost nine years but I'm still very honest, open and transparent and give people all the information they actually need to build the business properly and what resources and tools are going to need and how much it's going to cost. But the average private label seller will spend anywhere from five grand to $20,000 for a single product to get it ranked and selling below a sales rank of like 10,000, 8,000, 5,000. So we're selling daily and generating a significant revenue monthly off of a single product. It's going to cost you a lot. Now you can do coupons, you can do giveaways, you can do get people to leave your reviews, which is it's a very gray area because if you have friends and family leaving you reviews on your products and they purchase it and then they return it, that's technically against Amazon policy. You're not allowed to do that. And Amazon's cracking down more and more on it. And it's crazy because some people still teach this shit and tell you, yeah, get your friends and family to buy the product and have them leave a review and then just have them return it and you get your money back and you didn't even actually co uh, cost you anything to promote the product that way and get feedback. You'll lose your Amazon business faster doing that and never fucking get it back because you're doing stupid shit. So it's against policy. It's just as against policy as drop shipping from retail suppliers. You're just skating by on thin ice until the ice goes out from under you and then you lose your business permanently. So although private label is a very good business model and it's very sustainable long term, there is the downsides of how much it costs, which a lot of people won't tell you. Now you know it's costly. It costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Even if you try to be very conservative and order like a very small batch amount of the product, 10 units, 20 units, and then you try to get it ranked without spending on advertising. So if you're doing like coupon launches like Vipon or a coupon giveaway, you, if your margins aren't like 50 or 60% net margin and you're gonna do 50% off to get the product to sell on a coupon giveaway website, you're still going to be losing money. You're essentially just paying for the advertising by knocking the price down 50%. So no, no matter what, it's going to cost you money. It doesn't mean it's a bad way to do it. It just means there's a more efficient, way lower cost, faster way to the money way of doing it, and that's reselling brand name products. So reselling brand name products, so if you're paying for a done for you service or you're paying for mentorship, the few things that you need that are the most important when it comes to building your business successfully long-term, selling brand name stuff, 
wholesale suppliers, distributors, brand. So basically having suppliers, suppliers are the lifeline of every single business on Amazon. You, you could have all the strategy, all the pricing keyword strategies, you could have all the best resources in the world, but if you do not have good suppliers that have really good pricing on brand name products, you're not gonna be able to sell a fucking thing because you don't got products you can sell, right? You don't have enough products that have a margin that you can mark up that after Amazon seller fees, can you make money, yes or no? If you do not have that, which literally suppliers are the only thing that will give you that, unless you're manufacturing your own product, and then you're going to the private label because if you're manufacturing your own stuff or buying it from China, it's not a brand name item, so you will not be able to just list it and sell it on Amazon. It needs to be paid for. You need to pay for it. advertising. You need to pay for marketing, Amazon PPC, coupon giveaways, whatever. All the stuff that comes with a private label or white label business costs costly. It's a lot more costly. And again, I'm not bashing it because I do that method myself. I do all methodologies there is for selling on Amazon, dropship fulfillment by merchant, wholesale FBA, retail and online arbitrage for brand name products via FBA and private label or white label. Um, I'm just stating the facts between the two. So you have a very, very good informed decision when it comes to building your Amazon business, what it is you want to do. So if you're paying for a done for you service, private label done for you services, it don't really make a lot of sense to me. Wholesale FBA or done for you services in terms of like what I offer, I offer a done for you service, 15 to 20 K depending on what tier you're purchasing, like an 80, 20, 80, 20 deal where we keep 20% of the profit, you keep 80. Um, I know a lot of people charge 30, 40, 50%. They have an annual contract renewal fee. We don't have any of that stuff. So we also have like the smallest profit share option. I think the 80, 20, I don't think I've ever seen it anywhere else. Um, and you're leveraging an existing infrastructure that's taken an almost a decade to build. So the lifeline of the business that I was talking about, suppliers, wholesale, not just wholesale suppliers. So with the wholesale suppliers, if you're starting from scratch, forget if you're paying for a done for you service or not, if you're paying for mentorship or not, suppliers are the lifeline. So let's say you get a training program from Supreme Commerce Training instead. That training program has over 200 wholesale suppliers in North America and Europe that are some allowed dropship and it's within policy. And a lot of them are Amazon FBA. So you can buy in bulk and send it to Amazon fulfillment centers. Now people will ask, well, isn't it gonna be saturated then if let's say you have a thousand students and everyone's buying from the same product from the same suppliers, or if everyone's doing the same thing, is it not saturated? Um, so there's a re it's not saturated, number one, but there's a reason why having suppliers being the lifeline of your business. So if you, let's say, pay for mentorship, the reason I'm able to give away that many suppliers is because there's an unlimited amount of resources to someone who's been doing it for almost 10 years. That's the number one thing that people need to realize. The amount of resources that I have that I've accumulated in almost a decade, you're not gonna have in, um, in 30 fucking days. Like if you're building the business yourself, it's probably gonna take you five to 10 years to get to my point, right? Even if, if but if you pay for mentorship and I give you all the resources that I have now, suppliers, working strategies that work now, suppliers and resources and yes i do give away a lot of suppliers now i'm not going to give suppliers away that let's say a supplier that has four products like if they have 500 products and four of them are on amazon and those four sell good those four that supplier only is going to one client gets that supplier that one supplier that only has four different SKUs, that's not going to get shared amongst a thousand people or 50 clients or a thousand students those aren't to be shared because they're very limited valuable resources that have an extremely limited amount of products that you can sell. So what's the point in giving it to a hundred people when only one person could actually use those four products, right? But suppliers like Unfi, largest wholesale and grocery and vitamin supplier in all of North America, they have almost 300,000 different products and the majority of them can be sold on Amazon. So yes, that's the kind of supplier that can be shared amongst the masses because there's so many products and there's definitely not enough people that take the business seriously to make it saturated for you, number one. Number two, and the most important one, and I'm gonna break it down for you in an exact formula, a very conservative formula that helps you understand why the Amazon marketplace is not even close to saturated. Number one, there's at least 12 different categories, major categories on the Amazon marketplace. And let's just stick with North America. So USA, which is the biggest marketplace in the world, and then Canada, right beside the USA. I do both USA and Canada. So. With the North American marketplace, there's at least a dozen major categories. And between every single category, any product with a sales rank of, I would say, 60,000 or less is selling regularly, like once a week to daily. And the lower the sales rank gets, the, some, some products are like number one bestseller sells the hundreds to thousands of times per day. In the USA, especially in Canada, it's like three to five times less than what you would expect in the USA, but the Canadian marketplace is still really great. So... If there's a product that sells regularly under 60,000 sales rank in the USA, I know some products that have a sales rank of over 100,000, like in the home and kitchen category, 
it is the largest category in, in Amazon because it has the most amount of products. So therefore, a product that has a sales rank of 100,000 in home and kitchen, let's say it sells once a day or 30 times a month, once a day. And then you have a product in the toys and games category with a sales rank of 100,000. Well, if there's only like 4 million products in toys and games, but there's 30 million products in the home and kitchen category, a product with a higher sales rank in home and kitchen is gonna be like a product in the toys and games category with a smaller sales rank. Like how many times per month do they sell? So it varies between categories because of the amount of products in the categories. So on average, between the 12 to 14 major categories in the North American marketplaces in the USA, a product on a conservative scale with a sales rank of 60,000 or less for not every single category, but the majority of categories. Because like I said, home and kitchen, there's product with 100,000 sales ranks that sell daily. I'm being conservative for you and I'm not going all the way up there. I'm kind of shaving it down by another 40, 50,000 to make it conservative and very easy to, to figure out. So anything with a sales rank of 60,000 or less in the USA marketplace and anything in the Canadian marketplace with a sales rank of 15,000 or 20,000 or less is generally selling at least once a week or even daily. So if that's 20,000 and 60, that's 80,000 products. And if we have just 12 large categories, 80,000 times 12, right? Cause there's per category sales rank. So there's 80,000 products in a category that sells regularly and there's 12 categories, that's 80,000 times 12, which is over a million. So let's say 1.1 million products on Amazon that sell at least once a week. And I know there's more than that because of the major categories that have sales rank products with sales ranks of 100,000, 120,000 that sell regularly, but we're not even including those, okay? So if we have a 1.1 million products that we can sell regularly on Amazon and we're doing Amazon FBA, okay, brand name shit. If we take those products and how much money do we need? How much money do we need to saturate the Amazon marketplace? This is where we get to the, to uh, is it really saturated or not? I'm gonna give you an exact fucking answer with fucking math and, and the exact Amazon science behind it to tell you how it's not. So if we have 1.1 million products to choose from, and let's just say very conservatively, every product's only 20 bucks. As you know, there's products for five and ten dollars, but there's products for 30, 40, 50, 80, 100, 200, 500 thousand. There's furniture sets, small appliances, laptops. I would say the average cost of a product on Amazon is probably 60 to 70 bucks, like anywhere from 50 to 100 because of the amount of medium to high ticket products there are. There's a lot of small ticket products too. So let's just say 20 bucks is the average price of a product on Amazon. I'm, gu I'm guessing it's going to be higher than that, and we're not including the higher price products, but let's just say 1.1 million products. There's probably three to four that sell regularly in North America. I'm going to say there's three to four million products that sell regularly, at least once a week. But let's just say it's 1.1 or just over a million to be conservative, very conservative, like three times the amount conservative. And then we have uh, everything's 20 bucks. So if we're doing Amazon FBA, let's be conservative again and say we're only going to buy 20 units, right? We're not going to buy 30 or 50 or 100 or 500 units. Every seller is just gonna be very conservative. We're just, it's only $20 products and we're only gonna get 20 units. So there's 1.1 million products. They're all 20 bucks a piece. There is no such thing as a high ticket product. And we gotta buy 20 units of each one. Do the math. 1.1 million times 20 bucks. It's 22 million, $22 million worth of products if it's just 20 bucks a product. And then if we gotta buy 20 units of it, 22 million times 20, that's $440 million. So if you wanted to buy 20 units of every single good selling product on Amazon, you would need half a billion dollars, right? And that's on a conservative scale. Now, if we're realistic and we know there's at least 3 million products that sell well on Amazon, and then we take into account 50, 80, 100, 500, $1,000 products, right? The number gets astronomical. So we're probably going to be 10 times, at least 10 times that half a billion or the $500 million. We would need to at least 10 times that to be realistic because there isn't just only 10 and $20 products on Amazon. There's 30, 50, 80, 100, 200, 500,000, 3,000, 5,000 products on Amazon, like commercial appliances, furniture sets. There is some expensive shit on Amazon. So no, not everything is 20 bucks and not every time you're going to just buy 20 units, but we'll stick with the 20 units. But let's now say the average price is a hundred bucks. If we include some more high ticket stuff, be more realistic. And let's say there's probably 4 million plus, let's say there's 3 million products that sell regularly instead of one. So now we have 3 million times 100, right? 3, 30 million, 300 million, $3 billion. You'd need $3 billion and then you got to buy 20 units of each one. Like we're looking at having billions and this is why Amazon does like $300 billion a year in revenue for you to be able to saturate it 
you need billions of dollars to saturate all the good selling products. So is Amazon saturated? No. And here's another level to it. Not every single product can only have one seller. So if you're one seller and you got $5 billion and you have a great, and another thing is you have an agreement with every single brand owner in North America, every single brand in existence, no one has that. No one, maybe Amazon does, but we can't, we don't. I don't have an, I don't have an agreement with every single brand in existence. Hasbro, Fisher Price, Hamilton Beach, Cuisinart, KitchenAid, DeLonghi. I don't have an agreement with every single fucking brand in existence. Even after 10 years, that would take me a lifetime. I would die five times over before I can create a relationship with every brand in existence. So not every one seller can have an agreement with every single company and no one seller has $5 billion except Amazon or maybe like Fisher Price, but they're only selling Fisher Price shit. So if we take all those products and all that cost, how much money, how many, how saturated is Amazon really? Well, if we take the $5 billion required to saturate the top 100,000 best sellers in every category in North America, we would need a few billion dollars. And then if we have, let's say we have a thousand sellers, right? So how many people have a billion dollars laying around? How many people have a million? How many people have a hundred thousand? Majority of people do not. The majority of people have a grand, two grand, three grand, five grand, 10, 20. Maybe you got 20 to 50 grand, right? Like if you're looking to pay for a done for you service, you're gonna pay 15, 20K for the service. And then you got 30, 40, 50K to build the business over time. That's a pretty decent amount of money. And that's enough for someone to build a business for you. And then you're automatically tapping into 10 years of how like all the suppliers, all the logistics, all the relationships, like we have our own warehouses, we have full-time employees. We have all this stuff that's taken us 10 years to build. This is one good thing about a done for your service is what you're able to tap into. Now, if you're just looking at a training program that comes with a few hundred suppliers, that's already more than enough resources for any one person, even a thousand people. Because if we have a thousand people and let's say all a thousand people. So remember, we need at least $3 billion to saturate the Amazon marketplace, right? We did the math. We need at least a few billion dollars. If you, which is clearly not realistic, even if you spread it across a thousand people, because if a thousand people had $10,000 each, What's a thousand times ten thousand? A thousand times ten thousand. Well, let's just do the ten thousand and then add the three zeros from the thousand. So ten thousands, a hundred thousand, a million, ten million, a hundred million dollars. So if a thousand people all had ten grand to start an Amazon business with, they would have a hundred million dollars collectively. Is that going to saturate Amazon when you need at least three billion to saturate it? And then you need the supplier agreements and then you need to spend like 10, 20, 25 years of your life creating those agreements and building the business to that point. It's not going to happen. And that doesn't include the rate of which Amazon's still growing, which is very rapidly. And it also doesn't include the fact that you don't, not one seller only gets to sell every product. So if you go to Amazon, there's multiple people selling the same product. So depending on the sales rank, you could have five people selling the same product. Let's say a Hamilton Beach coffee grinder for 50 bucks. And we got five people and they're all share and it sells a thousand times a month. Everybody's getting like a hundred sales a month per seller. So there's five people for the one product. So now we're going to take that number and, and, and inflate it even further because if someone has $3 billion and they saturate the Amazon market, another guy could have 3 billion and they could all sell the same products as the other guy with $3 billion is selling and they would still get sales. Both of them would. So if we have 10,000 people with $10,000 each, and they all have the right agreements and they have access to every brand on earth, which doesn't happen. That's still only 1 billion out of like the $30 billion that we could all share collectively to build and saturate Amazon. It's, just, it's not saturated by any stretch of the imagination and it cannot be unless 100,000 to a million different people all had like half a million to a million dollars each. And they just allocated 100% of that money to their Amazon business. It's not saturated and it's far from it. I hope that helps you understand how unsaturated the Amazon marketplace is. I know products on Amazon where I'll look and there's like a sales rank of 500. So this thing's selling like 6,000 times a month and there's 10 sellers. And based on the data, if I look at the collective historical data based on how often the buyback's getting shared, how much of a percentage do we think we can get of the sales in that product? And if we can still get 5% of the sales, even though there's 10 competing sellers for one product only, well, 5% is 6,000 monthly sales. It's like 300 sales a month. If it's a $100 product, that's a shitload of revenue on a single product. So is Amazon saturated? No, far from it. Is having a thousand people that all have 10 grand for their business gonna saturate it? Not even fucking close. Even if I taught and gave these resources to a 100,000 people, how many people are gonna give up in the first six months? Probably the majority, because not a lot of, everybody wants the dream of being self-employed or building their own business, but nobody wants the fucking work right? No one wants the work involved. 
Um, number two is that a lot of people don't have the resources, the money to build the business or the wherewithal to create new agreements and actually stick it out. Even though Amazon selling brand name products is a very simple process and you don't have to spend money on advertising and marketing, not everybody is able to stick it out and a lot of people give up. So if you say just 50% of the people give up, we only got 50,000 people left. And out of 50,000, 40,000 of them have an average amount of money, a few grand, maybe five, maybe 10. So the select people that have a couple hundred thousand dollars, they're still not even going to come close to being able to saturate the Amazon market. With $100,000 cash, can you build an Amazon business to 50K a month, 60K a month revenue and $8,000 a month profit? So like $100,000 or a six figure net profit business annually after two to three years, Yes, you can do that. And are you going to be saturating the Amazon market? Not even fucking close. So I hope that helps you understand how one, the differences between private label and selling brand name products. Both models are still good. One is just obviously far superior. But the issue with the far superior business model, you're staying away from the advertising and marketing costs. You're staying away from China and cheap products and potentially lawsuits because it's your brand. And if anyone gets sued, it's you, not the brand owner. And then if Amazon decides to copy your product with the information you basically given them, the collective data that you've given them by creating your own listing on Amazon, you spent 20 grand on marketing, it now sells $5,000 a month in profit per month on that one product. And then a week later, Amazon creates the Amazon Basics brand of the same product of yours. And all of a sudden your sales tank. Or China, a manufacturer of your product, decides to jump on your listing and file an IP complaint against you and have your listing blocked and now they've taken it over. This stuff happens on, the, on a regular basis with private label sellers. Now, it's not to scare you away from it and scare you into doing wholesale Amazon FBA and buying brand name stuff. It's ju I'm just painting a clear picture for you so you can make an informed decision. And if you want to be able to do extremely well on Amazon to give you the best options and the best understanding of the right route to go. Now, you can still go the private label route. It is a good route to go. It's just going to cost you more and it's going to take way more time. If you want to get there in a shorter period of time and you don't want to spend a ton of money on testing and trial and error and testing products whether they're going to sell or not, just sell brand name stuff that it's already selling. Just don't drop ship from retail suppliers. Do it the right way. If you have the time, you have the money, but you don't have the time, you can obviously do a done for you service. I suggest taking your time doing your research, making sure you're paying someone of honesty and integrity and someone who's obviously clearly good at what they do and someone who's not charge overcharging and someone that doesn't have an annual contract renewal fee. To me, that is the biggest scam of all because if you pay someone $30,000 for a service and they're, now you paid them 30 grand and they also get 30% of the profit from your business, and a year later, just 12 months in, well, it's not realistic for you to make your money back in the first 12 months if it costs you 30 to 50 grand. If it costs you 15 to 20, can you make that back in the first year? Yes. I, my goal for clients is the first 12 to 16 months to get the original investment back, the original ROI via total gross profit preferably net profit for the client. It doesn't always happen. I'm honest. Sometimes it takes a year and a half. It also depends on how much working capital the client has versus how far can we scale the business? Because with Amazon, if you don't have a lot of money, you're going to hit a limit pretty quickly on how far you can scale it, right? It's a physical product business. You need money to grow the business. So, but can you make 30 to 50 grand back in the first year selling on Amazon? Well, if you're cutting corners and doing retail drop shipping, you can scale it fast, but you can also lose it very fast and never get it back. So if you care about the business three to five years plus from now, you're going to want to do it the right way from day one. It might take a little bit longer to grow the business, but five years from now, when you're doing $100,000 to $300,000 a month in revenue and you're making multiple six figures per year net, and then you have another guy who got deactivated six months later and couldn't get his store back, that's going to be the difference. Um, and then people could argue, well, private label is better because private label, you have no risk whatsoever because it's your brand, it's your business. Well, no, you're not selling on your own website. You didn't create Amazon, did you? You're still selling on an external marketplace. Chinese manufacturers can file IPs. Other people can compete with you. If you have a product that has a sales rank of less than 10,000, guess what? That's what 99.9% .9 of private label sellers are doing. They're trying to get their products ranked low enough where it sells daily. Guess what? Who are they looking at to compete with? You. They're looking to compete with and look and take the data from sellers like you, private label sellers that are selling products regularly. It's a matter of time before your sales, you'll be able to scale a business and do extremely well, but it is just a matter of time before your sales kind of die off. If it's a fad product, if it's just a product that's riding a trend, when the trend starts to fade, so does the sales on your product. If a Chinese manufacturer jumps on, you lose the product then too. And it's not to say there isn't downfalls with the wholesale FBA model because other sellers can jump on and undercut your price significantly. And the only way for you to get sales is if you lower your price significantly, like into a loss or break even or like a very small margin. And that does happen from time to time. And those are things, the roadblocks you're going to have to come across when growing the business. And this is why you need to be extremely well informed. And that's what this video is for. I know I haven't done a video in a while. 
but I wanted to educate and I wanted to help you guys. For those of you still looking to grow an Amazon business, be it through our done for you service where we do literally everything for you and you leverage all our infrastructure, supplier agreements and all that. Or if you're having the training and having me teach you and show you how to do it, or if you're trying to do it on your own, I hope this video helped. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your week. If you have any questions, drop them below or send me a message and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.